Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Sherwood Episcopal Church. I welcome all of you here present and also those who are joining us on Facebook Live. We are one body in Christ, and I'm glad that you all are with us here and online as well. Um, uh, just a few announcements uh, before we begin our service. Easter flowers, there's a pink slip in your bulletin. If you are interested in uh, donating in, in memory or in thanksgiving of loved ones, please do so, and your donations help adorn this church on Sunday, on Easter morning with all kinds of beauty. And it takes, we sort of get rid of the starkness and we bring in the resurrection of Christ through our beauty of this space. So if you're interested, please fill this out and your name and the loved ones will be in the bulletin as well. Continuing, we are collecting the toiletries for Cockeysville Middle School. I see a bunch of stuff there now, and I know um, Sheila and our congregation is hosting a birthday party and asking people, instead of bringing a present, bring some toiletries uh, for Cockeysville Middle School. So there's all, way, all kinds of ways to do this. And I thank her and also the outreach team for all their work in that. Um, we continue our third session uh, for the Lenten uh, study of the Lord's Prayer, and uh, that will be on Tuesday evening on Zoom at 6.30 or in person over at Faith Lutheran in their conference room on Wednesday at 3. And last but not least, we will be having a car wash or the youth from Sherwood, from St. Francis, and from Trinity Long Green will be hosting a car wash here in, in our parking lot on Monday, Thursday from 3 to 5. Now, as a tradition with Jesus of, of washing the feet of his disciples, we won't be washing your feet at the car wash, but we will wash your car. Any donations would be appreciated, uh, and it should be a wonderful, fun time. Let's hope we have good weather. And then you can all join us for the Monday service uh, where we do the washing of feet, and that will be at 6 o'clock that same evening. And I think the rest you can see in your bulletin. I commend you to take this home and read the scriptures throughout the week and pray for those who are on our prayer list, particularly those who are on our long-term prayer list. And now let us take a few moments to open our hearts and minds to hearing the Spirit of, of Jesus, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, through the hymns that we will sing, through the prayers that we will raise up either silently or aloud, and through the presence of this beautiful space. Thank you, and I'm glad you are here with us.
bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, you can be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. reading is from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 107, verses 1 through 3 and 17 through 22. We will read responsibly by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Lord, all those who the Lord has redeemed from the land, that he has redeemed them from the land of all He 
gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for he for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts of shouts of joy. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have, done, have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In 
the name of the one true creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know if you have ever seen this cartoon, but it is a cartoon of a priest at the annual meeting, and she says to her congregation, now this year, this year we are going to grow this parish, and I want to ask each of you, are you in with me? Do you support me? Now there was a little bit of mumbling and a little bit of comments back and forth, a little bit of silence, and then people began to speak up. You bet I'm with you, as long as no one sits in my pew. Of course, why wouldn't I want growth? As long as no one changes the liturgy or the music. I'm in, you got me all. As long as everyone knows that I was here first. I heard that once. I'm in, as long as I don't have to listen to those noisy kids. And you can imagine the list went on. And this was meant to poke fun at all of us, all of us who really don't like a whole lot of change, replies that we may have thought in our head or even expressed to, in one way or another when it came to adjustments within the church or anywhere in our lives. After all, who likes change? I don't. After today's service, we will be gathering as a community for our annual meeting. And we will do some business of the church, such as voting in our new vestry members and reviewing the church financials all that is expected of us. But we are also going to come together simply to be with one another, to celebrate each other, to connect again, to break bread, and to be as the body of Christ. It shouldn't be an anxious time, but a joyous time. However, if you have ever been to many annual meetings that I have been to, sometimes they can become quite contentious. And we often get buried in the weeds, and we fail to see the bigger picture. And in relationship to the readings from the Old Testament and the Gospel reading, I would say we fail to look up. Let me explain. As we look at our Old Testament reading, we hear the complaints of the Israelites throughout their wandering in the wilderness, there has been much belly aching and moaning. Not enough food, not enough water, appeals to return back to Egypt, despite the fact that they were enslaved and under the control of the brutal authority of the Pharaoh. Their memory had faded and their past suddenly looked rosier, despite the truth. Wilderness moments can get the best of all of us when we feel lost, untethered, fearful. We often question ourselves and others. We desire quick results for our pain, and clearly God's chosen people were no different. After all, they were in the wilderness for a long time and endured much more than most of us will ever bear in a lifetime. And in this passage, Moses is the intermediary between God and the people, and you begin to recognize God's almighty resilience and faith in his people despite their consistent complaints. When the poisonous serpents were sent among the people, killing many, the people were suddenly shocked, shocked into recognizing that they had turned their backs on their one true God. 
and they repented. God's instructions to Moses was to place a poisonous serpent on a pole so everyone who had been bitten could look at it and live. This was not God's punishment, but God's healing grace. They were challenged by God to literally see their sins as displayed through the symbolism of the bronze serpent on the pole, to be open to God's command to keep their eyes up on him, not on false idols and empty promises or even their empty stomachs. God was drawing them back towards a life with him, a life that guaranteed more than they could ma imagine, despite their time in the wilderness. In John's Gospel reading, this morning we enter halfway through a passage, and we must know that the words that Jesus is speaking in this Gospel are being spoken to Nicodemus, a Pharisee who approaches Jesus under the protection of night to ask some questions about his teachings, teachings that are turning Nicodemus' controlled world upside down. Nicodemus struggles with understanding Jesus' metaphors of being born again and wants simple answers that require a little work, much less faith on his part. So as we enter today's gospel reading, Jesus references the Old Testament passage we heard today, the lifting up of the bronze serpent, paralleling it with his words that the Son of Man must be lifted up so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. This Old Testament reference would have resonated with Nicodemus as Jesus tried to shed light into who he was and what would eventually become of him. So just as those who wandered in the wilderness, Nicodemus was wandering as well, something that was compelling him to follow or at least seek out Jesus and question his teachings. His actions would not have been approved by the Pharisees. That's why he came under the cloak of darkness. He was no longer confident in the teachings and the laws that he had always followed and that formed his identity as a Jewish leader. The world that gave him stability and power was suddenly being shaken and altered by this man named Jesus. In the sense, the people in the New Testament reading were in their own wilderness, trying to make sense of what was before them. This man promised those who believed in him would, they would not perish but have eternal life. Jesus spoke about the people being people of darkness that hid in fear of their sins they didn't want exposed. He offered them an opportunity to repent and look up to see the light beyond the dark wilderness, to follow his teachings and his ways. What I witness in both of these passages is the failure to look up, to receive forgiveness, and to look up and to receive the light of God's loving grace upon you, to look up and to know that our own field of vision is just one vantage point, not the entire view, nor the entire dream of God. I would venture to say we aren't much different from the Israelites who wandered in the wilderness, nor are we different from Nicodemus who sets the stage for the reading we just heard from John's Gospel. In today's world, it is easy. It is so easy to get lost in the weeds and the muck and the mire. We are constantly being barraged by, barraged by opinions and falsehoods fear and shock and awe. We don't, need, we don't need to venture too far to hear one version or another of how much everything has fallen. Things aren't what they used to be. Mm -mm. Our church, they're all empty or filled with an aging population. Our world is on fire. 
set by people hungry for personal power at all costs. Our Mother Earth is scorched beyond repair. The divides that separate us are deeper than we ever imagined. And these statements of fear are fueled by more fear. They may be true, but we have to always see the whole picture. And as we look back over this past year, we have so much to celebrate. Yes, we had some challenging moments with unforeseen property costs. Yes, we have lost family and church members that have left hearts in, holes in our hearts. And yes, we continue to face challenges that every small congregation and even big congregations face. But lest we become like the Israelites or those during the time of Jesus, let us keep our eyes looking upward towards the kingdom of heaven, towards the light and not the dark, towards the hope, not the fear. As we move into this year, we will be embarking on the Clean Water Project that will impact all of us. A project that was funded by grant money of $1.7 million. This small church did that. A celebration in and of itself. But I can guarantee you the actual digging and the moving of dirt will be uncomfortable. It will be inconvenient, and it will demand all of us as a community to remain patient and to keep our eyes not on the disruption around us, but on the larger and longer and more hopeful view, the view that will finally stem the ongoing erosion that has plagued our property for so many years. Not only that, but this project will finally take the water that has plagued the entire Sherwood community for years and capture it long enough to allow it to naturally process back into Mother Earth. Instead of rushing off our property and onto York Road and eventually into the water that we drink. Let us keep our eyes open to see the needs of our surrounding community, not to expect them to conform to us, but for us to listen so that we can, with our help, they can lift themselves up, help us to understand and to delve into what are the real issues causing systemic poverty instead of assuming they are the problem. May we gaze upon our community and not only think we need young people and families to grow, but to recognize that anyone who comes through our doors is a child of God and may need an open community to help them realize that they are loved. Or dare I say, teach us how to deepen our faith with Christ. Throughout history, communities and individuals have gotten themselves lost in the wilderness, and we probably will again, gazing downward in the weeds, in the lament, in the darkness, so much so that they fail to see the light radiating on the horizon and from above, the light of God's love through the promise that unfolds for all of us because of Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and ascension. My friends, it is never too late, so start looking up. Amen. And now let us stand to recite the Nicene Creed. It's found on page six of your bulletin. We believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. All that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, without beginning, without end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, one Lord, Lord Jesus
prayers of the people. Embraced by God's word, let us intercede for all those in need, saying, Have mercy, O Lord. For the church, that our Lenten hunger may be for justice, and our thirst for deeds of justice, we pray. For the church, that all those to be baptized at Easter may see through the dazzling attractions of sin and rejoice only in God's marvelous gift, we pray. For the community of nations, that the worth of every life may compel us on the way to solidarity and peace, we pray. For exiles and refugees, that all who are homeless because of war or hunger, because of the greed or hatred of others, or because of disabilities, may find places of rest and kindness, we pray. For those who struggle with addictions, may they find strength and love for the simple gifts of God, we pray. For those on our parish prayer list, Josie, Chip, Raymond, Peggy, Sally E., Kevin M., Victor, Joyce T., Kim, Bernie C., Tony, Midge, Barbara, Joan L., Rachel, Doreen, Norma, Virginia, Don M., Tom D., Josh F., Michelle G., Catherine, Charles, Bill P., Mike, Don, Karen K., Olivia, Mary Ellen, Andrea, and Stephanie, we pray. For the blessings of this life, especially for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, we pray. For this assembly, God's handiwork, that our steps be directed in ways of peace that lead us to decide of those the world despises and that we name these rejected ones our brothers and sisters, we pray. Give the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We We especially pray and give thanks for the life of Francis Butler, the brother of Sheila Hood. God, full of goodness and open to weakness, remember all whom we remember and remind us of all whom we would forget. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And my friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in peace and also those on Facebook Live. Is everything okay? Okay. Peace, everyone. <laughs> peace, peace. Okay. be seated. As you know, we do have um, our annual meeting afterwards, and thanks to the vestry, we have a lot of wonderful food. So after service, I ask you to go on into our parish wing and get something to eat, and then come back in so we can start our meeting and um, provide information to the congregation. We have copies of the annual report that was sent out. Um, And it shouldn't last very long, but it is important that we gather together and celebrate. Um, There is a QR code for those who may want to donate online and for those who are online as well. And um, otherwise, let us walk in love.
as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. All things come of thee, O Lord. Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. 
Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever Amen. and now as our savior christ has taught us we are bold to say our, our father Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
to say together the post-communion prayer is found on page 13 of your bulletin. Almighty and everlasting God, thank you for feeding us spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us of these holy mysteries of the is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. as we go forth into the world after our annual meeting, refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our mission as a congregation. And now let's say together, God commands us to enthusiastically cast open our doors to embrace all, impacting lives, bold service, no exceptions. And now let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey, good to see you. Have a good time. Yeah.
Did this thing? Are you going after this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck.